Welcome to this Sea Trade Maritime In Conversation podcast. My name is Emma Howe and I'm a director at Sea Trade Maritime. Today, I have the pleasure of touching base with Daniel Carby, CEO, Sea Horizons Offshore Marine Services, Doha, Qatar, and speaking today with his new COO, Bab Reinches, who joined the regional OSV operator earlier this month. Now, Daniel, when we last spoke back in May this year at Sea Trade Maritime Logistics Middle East, we talked about Qatar as one of the most exciting and emerging maritime markets with several opportunities. Since then, you've appointed BAB. Is this part of Sea Horizon's strategy for growth? And what might we expect to see as we look towards 24 and beyond? Thank you, Emma. When we did speak earlier this year in Dubai, we did mention our plans and our expansion plans to grow further. In that expansion plan, we spent a lot of time looking for the right person. And of course, given some previous discussions I had with Bab on similar levels, I didn't think that for a second of Bab being the right person because he's had the experience entering a the Middle East market and of course in the managerial roles and with other companies being involved in their big expansion. I think Bab is the right person for the job for sure and someone that leads by example for the whole industry. Like we've discussed before, you know, one thing that we look at a lot at Sea Horizon is the family-like atmosphere, our values, which is why Bab fits that perfectly like a glove. So turning to you, Bab, you've been located in Dubai for around seven years now, most recently as head of commercial offshore at P&O Maritime Logistics, and before that at Topaz Energy and Marine. In this role, you're now responsible for the UAE and Qatar, So tell us what excited you about joining Sea Horizon as the best fit for you and your career moving ahead. Thank you, Emma. There were quite a few things that came about. One of the most important things that excited me was basically when I when I discussed this with Daniel was the alignment of our values and how we see business first and foremost. We both believe in a very personal way of doing business. We both believe that it's more important to have relationships first than the business itself. We both have this family sense of values we want to bring forward. And I think that is the key thing that bonded us in the first case. Talking about Qatar, uh, Daniel's vision on on how we see Qatar developed, I was completely aligned. Extremely exciting market that has opportunities that are far wider. For instance, look at the UAE or in Saudi Arabia, because there's more players involved and there's more diversity. And we're not only talking here about purely marine services, but also about marine logistics services. So the scope of things was much wider. And that attracted me tremendously that uh, we could set up something new with a uh, family that was willing to invest in that and go forward with that. It's uh, tremendously exciting. Going back to you, Daniel, you opened your Qatar operations in 22. So not that long ago. And at that point, we're one of the only marine companies to be awarded a 100% in-country value score in Qatar issued by Tautin. At the time, you said that being a local company in Qatar, this milestone was extremely important to you as you want to add as much value to the local marine and oil and gas sector as possible, adding that Qatar is an emerging market with lots of opportunities. Can you tell us a bit more about those opportunities, please, Daniel? First, I'd like to add that we are still one of the only marine companies with 100% ICV score, which we are, of course, extremely proud about. The localization program of Tautin in Qatar is taking more and more of a role within the energy infrastructure. We are seeing more and more projects being supported by Tautin which is why it is so important to us in order to localize these projects and being a local Qatari company with majority shareholders Qatari, we are privileged to be able to provide as many services as we can to the energy infrastructure that are localized. So we are looking into bringing vessels into Qatar that will be Qatar flagged 
and Qatar owned. So we are excited about that and to continue to grow our presence with Tau Team. Hopefully having more 100% scores along the years. And then earlier this year, Sea Trade Maritime News ran a story that Middle East OSV capacity utilization now stands at 85%, with demand now exceeding current supply, and that the region was on the cusp of an OSV super cycle. Bab, turning back to you, what's driving that demand? I think all the OSV suppliers should be extremely happy about what's happening in the Middle East. It might even be higher than 85%. Uh, the vessels not being used are the ones that are not really fitting the requirements, maybe, but everything that fits is kind of working. And what drives that is the fact that this region, of course, is dominated by national companies who have a different outlook than IOCs than international companies when it comes down to what they want. They're not just purely profit focused, they also are having uh, requirements to, to ensure security and, uh, and economic growth for the country that they are serving. So there's a completely different view for these companies going forward with regards to uh, developments and, and the exploitation of oil and gas. And that view is long term. We look alone at, at Qatar, where recently $16 billion loan was being invested in the uh, doubling of the output of, of the gas field. It's just tremendous. And that drives it along for many, many years. How will that demand be answered? Would that be with new builds? It has to be inevitably on a very localized basis. I think new builds can be done. You see some of the changes coming up already with our clients are adapting to that. Demanding vessels that have to be new built almost because you cannot find them these days in the market. We're moving forward as well. Reaching 2024 next year and that means that a five-year-old ship is 2019, and that becomes a problem. The other thing I think that drives it forward is, is not so much demand from our clients, but it's secondhand prices are getting so high now that if you have a capital, say you have 20 million, if you invest that into a, a seven year old or eight year old ship, would you say, well, maybe I should buy a new one? Because that's where we're getting on these levels. On a larger scale, speculative buying, without contracts, or just grand scale buying like it happened several years ago, 10 years ago. I can't see that happening yet. It's interesting. You made a point there around finance, and that's something that, Daniel, you've spoken about quite a lot in recent months. And in fact, you have said that obtaining finance remains an issue. Although banks' interest in green financing was on the rise, that was still predominantly in Europe. What are you finding now in the Middle East? Has financing got any easier? And is there a solution that needs to happen? I don't think the position on financing has changed much since our last discussion. I think that it is still the same in getting financing. And I think that will change. As Bab said, you know, building on speculation is not happening in shipyards. And a lot of the financing outlets will need a long term contract. The green financing, it is becoming an option in the Middle East, whereas it was more of an option before in Europe and other parts of the world. But in the Middle East, it is relatively new, as we discussed last time. But one thing that will change the outlook on financing in the OSV sector is something that is being offered currently and slowly is longer term contracts, so higher incentives, which secures the financing. But If we want to speak about how different it is from today than it was six months ago, no, I think that obtaining finance is still challenging because of the risks lenders took in the previous super cycle. But I think we'll get there. I hope we get there. Thanks, Daniel. And going back to Sea Horizon, I know you and I have previously talked about regional maritime clusters with the UAE and the kingdom currently leading the way. What role will your company take in strengthening Qatar's place in the regional cluster lineup and what might that look like? The discussions we've had regarding the regional clusters when it comes to Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, all three major energy producers are having their own big expansion. 
So when we look at the expansion projects in Saudi Aramco, when Adnoc recently announcing another EPC contract for the Abu Dhabi fields, but Qatar, one of the most common points is the Northfield expansion, which is the largest LNG expansion in the world. I was reading an article a couple of days ago that in the next seven years, 40% of the world's LNG will be coming from Qatar. So given this project, it's a great opportunity for us as Z Horizon, as our goal is to mobilize more vessels and more assets into Qatar to operate for the energy expansion. And of course, that brings us back to why Bab is such a great fit for the company and the organization is because he understands the vessel. He's been in this industry for a very long time and to support our vision to supporting Qatar's oil and gas expansion is something that we could ask for anything more. Good. And then back to you. Obviously, you've been in the region for a long time, but this year, 23, is especially exciting as we've got COP28 just around the corner now. We know there is no quick fix, but what would you hope to come from this key climate moment for this year? Wow, this is quite a question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What I do hope comes out of of COP is that and that is what you see in the in recent times as well, is that the extremists on both sides will find a balanced way going forward. There's enough arguments on both sides of the table of the climate uh, discussion. And I hope they come to a more realistic approach of how we should do this. How that exactly fills in, I'm, I can't tell you, but I think we, everybody is struggling with some of the things that comes out of, uh, out of these discussions and tends to go one way or the other way. I do hope that we get a more balanced view. And, and I have good hope for that because we in this region in, in general has proven in the past that they can host these things quite well and quite successfully. So yes, I have good hope that something comes out of it, as long as it's balanced. And what about looking ahead to 24? What from both of you do you think are going to be the major challenges for the industry in 24? And where do you think the opportunities are? Daniel, let's start with you on that. Well, the challenges are the demand is so increasingly high and the supply isn't available. You know, with many projects being sanctioned and starting, uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And currently, the supplies aren't there, the vessels aren't available in the region. And that's, and yes, I started by saying that, that that's a challenge, but that's also an opportunity. There's an opportunity in bringing more vessels and operating them in Qatar specifically, because, you know, with Saudi's expansion, there's a lot of companies that are already positioned there. When it comes to Qatar, we have positioned ourselves and we look to continue to position ourselves even further to operate on these projects. So I do see the upcoming year to be more recent is going to be a very good opportunity for us and a lot of opportunities to bring new vessels into the Qatar energy ecosystem. And Bab, what about from your side? Kind of what he said. (laughs) From an operating view, I'm quite concerned about the crewing side of things. Yeah. It will be an enormous crunch on on getting competent crew. Everybody will be fighting for that, not just the Middle East, globally. You see enormous shortages there. People have disappeared during COVID. Demands are rising quite rightfully so from our clients for more competency. So I think that will be a very big challenge. But otherwise, yes, to meet the demands of our clients, have the right supply there and make sure that that all is there. Yeah, that, that will be the biggest challenge going forward. Well, thank you both for your time today and congratulations on joining Daniel at Sea Horizon, Bab, and I wish you all the best success, though I'm sure you don't need it. But congratulations again. Looking forward to 24. Looking forward to meeting you later this year. And thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for having us.